It's the Cube, covering Sapphire Now 2017. Brought to you by SAP Cloud Platform and HANA Enterprise Cloud. Hey, welcome. This is the Cube. I'm John Furrier. Special Sapphire Now 2017 coverage here in the Cube coverage. I'm John Furrier, and I'm with Frank Palumbo, who's Cisco. On my left, Margaret Anderson with SAP, and Gary Gapa with CenturyLink. Um, some significant news announced in, uh, in conjunction with Sapphire is the relationship between you guys around a significant cloud and cloud computing deal. Uh, Margaret, congratulations. This is a significant because customers want more flexibility. They want to have the kind of cloud native. They want to have the, the flexibility of the data center. Uh, Frank, talk about the deal from a Cisco perspective and the relationship to the context of this yeah, deal. Well, John, we're, we're super excited uh, to be part of it, and especially with CenturyLink, uh, CenturyLink and, and a vendor like SAP, and really our role in it is, is to help our customers you know, run on-prem, run, run in the cloud, and really you know, our infrastructure pro products need to provide the simplicity, the performance, and the security for them to do that. Margaret, the deal, talk about the deal specifics. What does the deal entail? Well, you know, it, it, it's a kind of a unique deal because, you know, CenturyLink was already one of our partners for the HANA Enterprise Cloud business. And then when the Cisco team came along and said, you know what, if we put your our gear into the CenturyLink data centers and power the SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud, that would be a tremendous win for everybody. And so we're very excited about that. Gary, I find this deal interesting because you have the engine of the SAP, you have the network and all the benefits that Cisco brings to the table, but you're dealing with the implementation and the managed service to customers. What's, what's the important takeaway from this announcement? Yeah. So to me, I think if you take a step back, right, uh, as uh, you know, I was sitting down with uh, some of the top SAP execs uh, and uh, Chuck uh, from Cisco uh, and our CEO, Glenn Post, we were talking about, okay, how do we leverage our joint assets together? How do we create more value for our customers? And if you look at today, every customer, the number one priority is digital transformation. Mm -hmm. The cloud obviously is part of that equation, right? And the other big uh, priority is, okay, how do I monetize this data in this new connected world? You're looking at 1.8 trillion connected objects by year 2020, which will be generating 43 zettabytes of data. But let me quiz you out here, right? Uh, how many <laughs> zeros in a zettabyte? <laughs> Um, I think I knew this answer going in since I got it wrong on our on our previous take. <laughs> <laughs> I said 12, it's 21. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. It's a lot. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to say 21 too, or just All a right. lot. It's a lot of data, right. a lot Maybe. of devices. Yeah, I got to go with 21. You know, it's it, it sounds like a good number. All <laughs> right. So th they saw my cheat sheet, right? Uh, <laughs> Anyway, if they had uh, too many zeros, I mean, too, too, yeah, many, too many zeros. Oh, that's significant. The data—it's getting worse. The data tsunami is coming. Right? It's, it's already happening. It's happening, right? So you think about the amount of data which is being generated, and uh, you know what we want to do is we want to provide a highly secure, automated, and in this case, SAP certified private cloud platform uh, from CenturyLink, where we can really help have the customers laser focus on the business they do. And mm -hmm. we help them with the, the deep platform, right, which can help them monetize their data, help them drive the top line, increase the bottom line, mitigate the risk in a fast manner, mm -hmm. in a highly secure manner as well, and I'll talk more about that. Gary, you bring up a good point, and I want to get Frank involved in this next one, double down on mm -hmm. the data comment, because you factor in even the IoT, Internet of Things growth, it's going to be even more significant. And then the security question pops up because as the data centers move to the cloud and the hybrid and or pure cloud, the perimeter is gone. Now the perimeter is how we manage security in the past, but now with the perimeterless environments, security is critical. So how does this customer feel secure? And can you guys comment on the security aspect of what, how this relationship will roll out and, and, and the, the non-disruptive nature that you guys bring to the table. Is that what customers want to know? Is it going to so, I mean, so John, from the Cisco perspective, and Gary mentioned it, we talk about this digital transformation, and, and that's kind of the buzzword in the industry, but most customers are looking for a business outcome, and really to get that business outcome, they have to make a business decision, probably based off the technology, you know, like SAP HANA. So this is mission critical, you know, information. And at Cisco, that's why we're so, you know, in tune for what the network can do, because it's going to provide security at a lot of layers, whether it's at the edge, whether it's at the aggregation point, or all the way back to the data center or into the cloud. So the security at multi-layers in multiple places 
pieces. And, and that, you know, with the bad actors out there, that's the way you need to implement it so you can start to bring this stuff together and give the customers, <coughs> you know, the, the confidence that, hey, this transaction, this data is going to be secure. So Gary, the outcome that we're talking about is no, no hacks, no breaches, you know, um, secure. <laughs> yeah, well, it is highly secure, but you got to be always uh, be prepared. Yeah. And uh, if you think about, right, uh, uh, Central Link, right, today we have 500,000 miles of uh, fiber, right? 50,000 miles of fiber. Uh, now, once we complete the level three acquisition, uh, we'll add another 200,000 miles of fiber. You're talking, uh, talking about 750,000 miles of fiber touching 100 countries over six continents and 35% of the global internet traffic going to our network. And being, uh, once the level three acquisition is complete, will be the second largest network and we are critical to countries' infrastructure. So there is a deep focus on cyber threats mm -hmm. and things we do, right, to avoid the bad actors uh, uh, getting in. And Having now, that network intelligence too is going to give you more data to fight the actors as well. Absolutely, but uh, you know, to your earlier point, right, now we truly, right, uh, this, this situation gets compounded with this connected world revolution. So when you are connecting this 1.8 trillion objects, you know, you got to ensure each yes. of these objects is secure. And this is where the intersection of cyber security and IoT kicks in, and that's right in our wheelhouse. And, and don't forget latency, a word that yeah. you know, is rearing its head more, more importantly as people move across with IoT and across the cloud. Margaret, talk about the role that um, the HANA Enterprise Cloud plays in all of this. Was, is it the glue? Is, is it the connective tissue? What's the, what's the role of uh, the HANA Cloud Platform? Well, I mean, HANA Enterprise Cloud. I'm yeah, sorry. I was just going to say. So, from a HANA Enterprise Cloud perspective, it's a private managed cloud, and we do an awful lot of work from a, from an SAP perspective to make sure that the customer's environment is totally secure, but is also accessible all of the time for the customer. Because today, most businesses run 24/7, and they run all around the globe. So, when some team is working, and this is their prime business day later in the U.S. business day, it's prime business time out in Asia, it's prime business time in Europe and you need a cloud that's always available, always up, and it's secured. You can guarantee that no other data is leaking into it or out of it, and that's really important for our customers because if you think about it, we have customers today that are SAP customers running in the HANA Enterprise Cloud that are competitors to each other. So you have to make sure that you can guarantee that there's not going to be any data is going to sneak out the back door over here or someone's going to get in the back door over there, and we have a fairly large security team at SAP. We have very stringent standards at SAP and every time we form a partnership with somebody, we say, here are our standards. If you can't comply to these, we can't do business with you as a partner. So mm -hmm. from our perspective, it's very important to know that anybody that we work with takes security as serious as we do. Well certainly these guys are big partners and not their known companies yep. since Cisco and CenturyLink. I mean, this is, this is big. Um, Talk about the unified, how you guys uh, help with the unified computing architectures that Cisco has, because you guys have mastered this in the data center, and you guys have a lot of experience, but now with the cloud, what's your vision of how this is going to play out from a Cisco yeah. standpoint? Well, as Margaret described, you know, multi-tenancy in the SAP environment is, is a pillar for them. They, they have to make that work for, for the customer, and that's something we've been driving at, at, at Cisco you know, for a long time. When it comes to the compute platform, which we call UCS, we've been really the leader in converged infrastructure platforms for a long time you know, with UCS, and, and most recently now we're the number one platform for SAP you know, with UCS in the converged environment. So it's those attributes that have enabled us to really get inserted there to provide the customer value. And you get the packet level of the network transformation. So yeah, John, you're, you're more of a geek than I knew. Yeah, I mean, okay. well, we yeah, follow network. Good. I mean, <laughs> looking at 5G and network transformation, you're seeing a lot of end-to-end -end architectures really winning out. And I think why I'm excited about this news is essentially it's a partnership that's providing an end-to-end -end solution. Gary, but you're on the front lines. You're the manager of service. <laughs> you know, talk about the impact that you see this deal because yeah. now you have to turn up services and have that customer touch point. If you look at right uh, how we are pulling together the solution, right? So obviously, if you look at uh, on the compute side, we're using the US uh, UCS, right? <laughs> and, uh, and on the switches, there's the Cisco networking switches, and then you're looking at the Nexus, Gary, Nexus. Nexus. All right. I wanted to make sure Frank <laughs> is paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you're looking at the NetApp storage and the VMware for virtualization. And then another key element we're using is Venomics, right? Uh, which uh, 
integrates with the UCS, right? And mm -hmm. it's pretty much integrating all the APIs for all these components. And obviously, you know, the, the powerful in-memory HANA engine. So all these things are being pu uh, are pulled together to create a platform which we are providing to the customers so that they can really focus on what they are good at, their business, and mm -hmm. they're delivering a powerful mm -hmm. value to the customers. And what it does is, uh, with the UCS uh, and the Venomics and some of the other elements, right, we can onboard customers uh, within days, right? What used to take us uh, 32, 33 days, now we can do that within nine to 11 days, so, which is yeah. a, a, a big, big uh, plus uh, when you know, a customer approaches SAP. It's a huge SAP. shift in the business yeah. model, first yeah. of all, the client delivery on your end, managed service is significant. Uh, there's a lot of automation involved. In fact, I was talking to a venture capitalist recently in the, mm -hmm. in the here in Silicon Valley, and uh, we're talking about uh, network transformation, digital transformation, and uh, they invest in infrastructure. He goes, "Oh no, it's a, not a lot of new companies coming out with an infrastructure making hardware because of the cloud." He says, "Plumbers are turning into machinists." Yeah kind of indicating that a lot of automation is happening at the lower end of the stack and the action is happening higher up in the stack, to your point, things are happening faster in terms of level of services. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think other thing which uh, we also bring to the table is the deep SAP expertise, right? If you look at some of the critical, mission critical applications, whether it's S4HANA, Suite on HANA, the ECC, or the entire BI Suite uh, Enterprise Portal, and the list goes on, right? And that becomes critical, so that way we can get them up and running very quickly and give a solid ROI to the customers. Well, significant endorsement, you want to make a comment? No, I'm just saying that when you're talking about the vis visibility of the SAP platform, this is something the customers thought about, right? It's going to get to all levels of the organization and really they're making critical business decisions off of, of the SAP HANA platform. It's got to be there. I mean, and you know, that's, that's obviously our challenge to, to meet that for customers. Margaret, uh, HANA um, Enterprise Cloud is the engine, okay? and you guys are providing significant phone. How do, you, how do you see this collaboration playing out for customers? What should they expect from the collaboration with Cisco and CenturyLink? Well, you know, what we want the customer to have is a seamless experience. We tell them up front that we have this partnership and that we're going to work together, but we really want to keep them focused on the value that they get from running their applications. Because think about it this way, when you get in the car and you turn on the engine and you, you want to drive away, right? You know the engine is there, you know that the engine, depending on how much horsepower you've invested in, depending on what kind of make and model, you get different things from it, but you know it's going to always be there, it's always going to work, okay? Then if you want to enhance the engine, shall we say, you want to know that the right people have the skill set for those enhancements. So when customers come into the HANA Enterprise Cloud, sometimes they start off with the migration. So one of the things you're doing is you're kind of sunsetting all the old stuff and you're helping them move on to the HANA plat the, um, our HANA platforms, whether it's S4, whether it's Suite on HANA, whether it's their BI Suite, you're helping the customer get started. But that's the start, because after that, there's all this other wonderful stuff that we develop at SAP, being that we're a software house, mm -hmm. like IoT and our new Leonardo that's being announced at Sapphire, and we want customers to be ready to take advantage of that. So we tell the customers, you need to move away from all the old stuff because it's not reliable anymore. We want to move you into a different level of reliability so that you're ready to scale up your organization and so that you can do more business. And in the end, the customer says, okay, I need to know the cloud is there for me. I don't want to have to be thinking about it every day. What I want to be thinking about is how can I do new business? How can I open up offices in other parts of the world? How can I you know, transact business globally, mm -hmm. right? They're not really thinking about, okay, I need more stuff, right? So if they need to expand, we call up our partners and we say, okay, the customer wants five more terabytes of something, yeah. 10 more terabytes of whatever, and they just want it to happen, okay? And they don't want to have to have really the long they projects. The they just want it to, to be <laughs> there for them. They want to know that they can scale out and scale up. So one thing just to add, right? So I think, uh, uh, which I did not mention, uh, it just becomes critical that the redundancy is there. And so this is where the Metro DR capabilities, right, uh, which mm -hmm. we bring to the table, that becomes very powerful. And uh, if you look at what we have done is, we have created uh, 10 pods, right? In the US, uh, you have those in the Santa Clara, Dallas, uh, Chicago, and the DC Sterling area, and then Singapore and, uh, uh, and the, the London market. And the Metro DR capabilities are available in all the three markets, which is a very critical element that the customers know 
that there's a zero. And this is disaster recovery is certainly yeah. really a big deal because yep. you can't think about after the fact. You got to think about it up front yeah. in the in in the managed service. You can't say, oh, by the way, I forgot that thing about DR. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> thing is, you get into a lot more preventive maintenance, right? Because uh, you know and this is where there are dedicated teams, right, which are doing nothing, right. Once the build process yeah. is done, you get them up and running, right? Yeah. And how do you ensure, right? Uh, we are able to predict before anything. Uh, well, I think this on. news is significant. One, the size of the players involved, when, and but two, it speaks to the transformation that's happening in the marketplace. Yeah. Customers are moving to a new way to operate their business, and at the end of the day, you guys are making it easier to run the, some of the core software mm -hmm. that can scale, but it comes down to how do you migrate at scale without having any kind of rip and replace or lift and shift, which, by the way, lift and shift, I always said it's code word for rip and replace, but customers are on an evolutionary journey. There is no silver bullet in the cloud, in my opinion, so we've covered that on theCUBE. Your thoughts on this, because do you guys see it the same way? Um, customers aren't just going to you know, move tomorrow, they're going to want an evolutionary approach, but they're going to want to have it at scale. It's a journey, yeah. and so, you know, oftentimes customers say to us, what's the safest thing to do first, right? What, what pieces of my environment can I take into the cloud and then gradually over time, whether it's a few months, whether it's six months increments, it depends on how the customer's running their business, can I keep moving it in there so I can keep getting value and at some point this is all mm -hmm. done, goes away, and now I'm fully transformed into the cloud. And we see some customers who can do really quick projects, they're very agile and they're very nimble and so you know we can migrate them in and get them going and, and running very quickly. We've got other customers who are more risk adverse, and so they want to proceed a little slowly. So we can we can do all of the flavors, depending on what they want to do. And so when we first talk to customers about the Hand Enterprise Cloud, we talk about the options. We talk about what they can do. We make recommendations from an SAP perspective as to what we think their speed could be, and then we help them get into the cloud because they might get left behind yeah. if they don't make that move. Well, the modernization trend is key. People want to be modern. The apps are rewritten differently. Yep. Um, the more the relevance is more towards agile and speed. But I, you know, I think I like this announcement. You got the reliability of the Cisco with moving packets mm -hmm. around in the data center, rock solid, the software core engine in, in Hunt Enterprise Cloud, and scale at the managed service level that can give you the flexibility to run whatever you want. And I think that's interesting. Do I, did I get that right? Yeah. Uh, and John, I think the other thing is, it looks like we've been working on this thing for a week. We've been working together on this solution for, for years now to you know, make it right. So there's, the, you know, there's different you know, stages along the way. So this is truly. What are some of those key stages that customers should know about? Well, I mean, we were just talking about when we now, uh, HANA Enterprise Cloud is, you know, could you run HANA in the cloud now? That's, a, that's yeah. it's, it's faded complete, it's already done. Yeah. Sure, certainly can. And customers can make decisions now to say, hey, am I going to start on-prem? Am I going to start in the cloud, you yeah. know, and, and go through that whole kind of process as to what's what's the best thing? So we're providing that flexibility, but you know, this is something we've been working on for a while, and and I think you know when you look at it, the other solutions out there, and if a customers making the right evaluation, you want to go with a CenturyLink, SAP, and Cisco to say, hey, you know, this is the right muscle, the right process behind this. This is amazing. You guys are a great deal. Again, Frank, Senior Vice President at Cisco, and uh, Gary, who's the Chief Relationship Officer, President of the Advanced Solutions Group, and Margaret, Senior Vice President. All the senior executives, uh, the principals here, congratulations on this news. Uh, we'll wait to see how, how it plays out. Thank you for having oh, us today. Okay. Okay. Cube coverage, special Cube coverage of Sapphire 2017. I'm John Furrier, back with more live coverage after this short break.